Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite types of effects, delay. We'll talk about what it is, how to use it, and I'll give you a couple of my favorite settings. Let's dive in. So the first question we need to ask is, what is delay? Chances are you already have an idea. Let's go over what delay is and walk through a quick tour of the different settings. Now, I'll be using analog delay inside of Studio One, but this applies really to all delays. They all have some variation of these components. Obviously, every one is a little bit different, uh, but let's walk through those. So before we walk through, a, a delay is simply a some sort of device that takes a signal that you feed into it and repeats it back. You'll, you'll hear it called echo. If you've ever heard anything echoing in a song where you hear someone sing something, hey, and then you hear, hey, 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 that's delay. Now, there's lots of different ways to use delay. The, one, the example I just gave is only one of them, and I'll walk you through some of my favorite examples. But first, let's go through the components and do a quick tour of the basic components of a delay, okay? The first thing is the time. This is saying how, what, what, what rate are we doing the delay here? Is it, um, you can set this to milliseconds and say, I want the delay to be so many milliseconds, or you can set it a lot of times to sync to the tempo of your song. So right now this is set to quarter notes, but I can set it to as, as high as four bars and as low as 64th notes, okay? That's the time setting. Uh, has a couple different names, but sometimes it's just called delay. Feedback, this is really important. Feedback is how much of the signal of this delay gets fed back into itself. In other words, how many repeats are there? Now, it's not a number. Uh, generally, it's never a number, but it's generally a percentage, a knob you can turn up and down. So if I have this turned all the way down, we only hear the delayed signal once, and as I turn it up, it repeats more and more. If you've ever played with delay pedals, for example, if you turn the feedback or the repeats knob up really high, it starts to feed back on itself and self-oscillate, like it feeds back out of control, um, which can be cool sometimes. But I generally start around 40% feels good to me. The LFO setting, this is more in just some types of delays, like a Memory Man guitar pedal would have something like this. This is basically a, a, an amount of modulation on the delayed signal. And modulation is just like a chorus effect kind of thing where it gets a little bit pitchy and can sound really cool and vibey. Um, I'll mess with this occasionally, but right now I think it's set to not do anything. Um, let's see, over here, we'll come to that in a second. Uh, color, now this is called color inside of this plugin, but most delays you'll see, especially ones modeling analog delays, will have some sort of low cut and high cut filters on them. Another word for those are high pass and low pass filters. All this is doing, the low cut is cutting everything off below a certain frequency. We can turn it off or we can roll things off below 200 or so, and then high cut rolls off the highs. I like kind of a darker, vibier delay sound. So all my delays tend to start something like this. So they're very mid-rangey. There's not a lot of definition there, and I like that. Now this is actually new uh, with version five of Studio One. We've added a drive control, which has a solid state or a state space modeled drive circuit in here that introduces a lot of saturation and can get pretty gritty. This is just on the delayed signal as well. So the, the, the main signal coming in remains untouched, but the delayed signal, you can add some drive to it. Now, motor here, I don't mess with this one. I forget what it does. When you mess with it, it kind of adds in some kind of different variables to the delayed sound that can sound cool. I honestly don't mess with it much. Maybe I should. The width control, this is a little bit new with this version. If you have a stereo signal going to it, or if you pan your signal to the left or to the right, then there will be some different ways that it interacts with the delay, uh, and I'll show you those in a second. But this is this is a very powerful part of the plugin, and I love that. And finally, we you generally on a delay, you have some sort of a mix knob. This one's called uh, dry wet, and in Studio One we can actually lock that so we don't accidentally turn it down. Um, and the reason you want that is there's two set two different ways you can set up a delay. In your signal. The two ways are, first, you can set it up like a guitar pedal. So if you're familiar with guitar pedal boards, if you have a delay pedal on your pedal board, let's grab another copy of Analog Delay, and we just drag it onto the track, it's in line after the compressor and the EQ, then we set this dry wet knob to say how much of the original signal are we hearing versus the delay signal. So it would sound something like this. At 0%, we're just hearing this guitar. But as we turn up this global dry wet, we're gonna hear the dry signal and the delay. 
And if we turn it all the way up, we only hear delay. Okay? So the, the way we set this up, if this is going to be on an individual channel, then I'll use the mix knob to blend how much of the dry signal are, am I hearing versus delay. The same way I would with a delay pedal on my pedal board. However, with mixing, I don't do that way very often. Occasionally, if it's on a guitar track and I just want to dial it in that way, or I want the delay to go before a distortion or something kind of crazy like that, um, then I'll put it there. Otherwise, nine times out of ten in my mix sessions, I'm setting it up this way, where I've got the delay on its own effects channel, and then I'm using a send from the guitar to send a copy of that guitar to this delay. Similar to if you had an analog board and you send your vocal out to a rack mount delay unit in the live PA rig. It's that same idea. There's two faders for each, um, and I'm sending some of the signal to the delay. Now, I usually leave the fader on the delay alone, and when I'm using a delay like this, I've got that global dry wet knob set to 100%. Because what I want to hear is I want to hear the dry signal on this channel and the delay signal here. And then to adjust how much delay is happening, I can adjust how much I'm sending on this send. So this send level is kind of like a mini fader telling me how much I'm sending to that delay. So let's, uh, let me show you how that works. We hit play, turn the send on. Not hearing any delay yet. But as I turn this up, the dry signal that you just heard will not change at all, but we're now adding in delay signal over the top. So when I stop, you're still hearing that delay repeating over and over. Let's say we set the feedback to 0%. Here's what that delay would sound like. You just hear that one repeat. It's like a kid playing the copy game where they copy everything you're saying after you, but they only do it once. It's cool, it has its own, has its, a certain place, but if you want it to kind of repeat over and over, you start to bring that feedback knob up like I'm gonna do now. You see what's happening? Playback has stopped. It's just feeding back into itself. And if I boost this feedback signal, it's going to keep doing that and get really loud and distorted sounding. It can be really fun to, for example, automate this feedback on a section so it starts to kind of get out of control and then pull it back down. Uh, but for me, generally, starting at around 40% feels pretty good. I like it. If there's going to be delay, I like it to have a little bit of a feedback there. So this is actually my first setting I want to show you is this right here. Uh, this is just a basic quarter note delay. So if we listen to the whole song to give you a little context of what's happening... And then we can adjust how that delay sounds. Maybe we think it's a little too bright. We can bring this high cut down to make it even more muffled. Like this. Or if we think it has too much low end. Rolling that up to 550 got rid of any lows and low mids, so we don't have any risk of making it sound muddy. This drive knob is pretty fun, too. As I turn this up, you'll hear just the delay get pretty crunchy. Very crunchy. I don't like it all the way up, but it can be kind of cool to have a little bit extra drive in the signal. Now real quickly, here's what these LFO sounds can do for you.
Okay, so that's that's fairly unusable, but if you get it in there just a little bit, it adds a little bit of modulation that can be kind of cool. <laughs> it almost adds an extra amount of like uh, like vibrato to the sound, um, a lot like what I like with my Memory Man pedal that I use. Down here, let's just check this real quick. I forget what this does. So it's, it's literally like you're affecting the motor of that tape machine if it was like an analog tape delay. Um, you're adjusting kind of the speed of it. So as I increased this, the delay time got a little bit faster, I think. All right, let's talk about this width control because that could be kind of cool. Uh, this is specific to analog delay, but a lot of different plugins will do similar things. Right now we're listening to it. It's just an analog delay sound. I'm sorry, it's just a mono signal. Okay. But if we switch this ping pong mode to sum, we're just going to sum things together and introduce the stereo spectrum. Listen to what happens. So the first delay actually came out of the left side, and then the next delay came out of the right side, and it kind of ping pongs back and forth. What does the two channel do? So the two channel sounds mono again because it's only going to react if I pan things in the sim. So if I pan this to the right a little bit, it actually goes to the opposite side, which is which is weird. Uh, but if I leave it off and I pan to the side, it just stays mono. So we kind of introduce stereo-ness by adding in one of these channels. Now I really like the sum mode, and then you can mess with the width if you don't like it to be that wide. So something like this might be a little less dramatic. Okay, so that's the quarter note delay. A couple other of my favorites. Um, I do like a dotted eighth note delay. If you're just if you're a U2 fan, that's just kind of a go-to. It's got this syncopated vibe to it. It only uh, only works in certain things. Uh, half note delay can be cool on vocals in certain sections. Obviously, it's going to be twice as long as a quarter note delay. Definitely makes it sound a little crazier <laughs> because, to go away, uh, because it's such a long delay, but it can be cool for just certain phrases where maybe you just turn the delay on for one note. Things like that. You can kind of automate that mute button to go on and off in sections, which can be cool. Now, one of my favorite delay settings is to go switch it over, turn the sync off, so we're looking at milliseconds, set it to something like 120 milliseconds, set the feedback to zero, and maybe give it a little bit of grit and drive. And this is my f one of my favorite delay settings. This is just a regular old fashioned slap back delay. You can roll off the highs even more to make it sound really lo fi. And maybe turn down the amount of delay just a little bit. Adds just a little bit of space to it. Sounds really great on vocals. And you can blend it in and make it not super obvious. And it can be nice and subtle in the background. Here's what it sounds like if you don't put any of this EQ here on it. And then with no drive. You can see how that's almost more like it's an interruption to the sound. If we roll off some of the lows and the highs, it sits back a little bit more. We can always turn down the send as well. But the whole reason for doing this send approach is that the dry guitar is always the same volume. We're just adding in more delay over the top. Hey, 
Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you liked it, click that little like button. Be sure to subscribe because we have a lot of great content here on the channel and I don't want you to miss it. All right, see you in the next one. Tree. Meow. Whoop.